that posted to YouTube probably tomorrow and then share it out um, to the email list that this, the invitation for this went out to as well as our website and our Facebook page. So if you um, miss anything or you don't, you just want to listen and don't worry about taking notes, um, I will send it out. Absolutely. All right. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to try to keep an eye on the waiting room in case anyone uh, jumps in. But again, I, uh, my name is Jamie Curtis. I'm the principal um, at Pinecrest Academy of Northern Nevada. It is a privilege and an honor to get to share with you tonight about our incredible school. I'm going to start at the very beginning and you're going to get an uh, overview of probably most of the questions that you have, but along the way, feel free to type questions into the chat box. Um, and after each topic, I'll kind of stop and see if there's any questions um, that I can answer that are on each of the topic areas of the presentation. So will you give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen? Awesome. All right, we got a couple more coming in here. Okay, so um, this is uh, Pinecrest Academy of Northern Nevada. We are going into the 21-22 school year um, as a K-8 school. This year we're, we opened as a K-7 school and our um, seventh graders will roll up next year as our first eighth grade class. So next year we will be K-8 um, and have uh, an additional class in sixth grade as well fifth and sixth grade. Our mascot is the Ram. So you'll hear me talk about our Rams. If you ever have a chance to come to our campus, you'll see Rams everywhere. The Ram is our mascot and um, we, are, we are very proud to be the Rams. It means a lot to us as uh, you know, where we're located uh, in the Northern Nevada desert area as well. So the kids love to talk about being Rams. We are located out in the north end of Spanish Springs. So from Pyramid Highway, if you're not familiar with our location, Pyramid Highway north to Calle, West Calle de la Plata and turn left on Silent Sparrow. So we're at a pretty, um, the pretty far north end of Spanish Springs and tucked away in um, the beautiful neighborhood over here. So not, not too, too far. Just an overview of what I'm going to cover this evening. Um, I'm going to talk about our school, how our school came to be, what is a charter school, if you're not familiar with the concept of a charter school, introduce you to the Pinecrest team. I'm going to go over what the sample schedule looks like for our students and share the calendar for next year, answer some questions about those. I'll talk about the learning structures that we have in place for our students, as well as some of the support um, that's part of our instructional model. I'll talk about academics, our curriculum, our special classes and electives that the students get to take, as well as our student academic and behavior intervention team, or what we call SABIT, um, that can be likened to the RTI process for interventions for students in special education. Um, I'm gonna share about our vision to have a diverse school community and what that looks like for us and where we're going. Um, and then talk about student resources and partnerships and our school community and um, health and safety and some of the things that we have in place right now, as well as what that's going to look like next year. All right, so just an overview of our school. Um, obviously, you know, this, we, we're realizing at this point in time that the education that our students are journeying on matters more than maybe it ever has before. As we approached the 2021 school year, there were a lot of factors that we had to take into consideration, right? Like COVID and a new building and different grade levels and a new staff and all of these things. But ultimately there's three guiding principles that, um, that we subscribe to and that we um, adhere to as we navigate the journey of educating students alongside you. So the first is that the health, safety, and well-being of our students, staff, and families is of the utmost importance. The second is that our students deserve a rigorous and relevant education that produce, produces measurable academic growth, and also that our students, experience at, uh, our students experience at school will shape their view of education for the rest of their lives. So hopefully, as I'm speaking today about our school, you'll see where all of what we've put in place aligns with our, our vision and our mission in these areas.
All right, at the core of Pinecrest Academy is a collaborative culture. Um, community is so important when we're raising kids, um, not just uh, what we do here at school, but that extension at home and what that looks like. So um, collaboration at our school includes our students, our parents, the staff that we have at our school, our community members and partnerships, as well as our school board. So we have really wrap around care and concern for our students. Pinecrest, although we are a new campus, is not new. Pinecrest Academy was founded in Florida in 2000. So we're going on 21 years as an organization. It was originated by a woman named Judy Marty. Um, Judy had um, and continues to have a vision for education, for using data to drive instruction and providing um, academic support and that community-centered approach to, to educating students. Um, we have, uh, and I'm going to kind of skip a little bit, but we have 24 locations over here on the right side. You can see uh, we have a school that opened also this year in Idaho. We have five sister school campuses in Las Vegas. We're the sixth location in Nevada, as well as 17 sister schools in Florida. So we collaborate at the interstate and uh, across the country level to not just look at our curriculum, but how, how we're doing things, our processes, how we're responding to some of the shifting approaches to education right now, um, what historically has been done at Pinecrest and you know, also taking into account the flexible mindset that we've had to have this year. Always, everything that we do is student-centered. So our student-centered approach includes the philosophy that students are at the core of our mission and vision. Every decision that we make goes back to the question of what is best for kids. We provide a safe, positive, and caring learning environment, and we're focused on student growth. And I will say um, caring and positive are some of the, the things I hear from our families on a daily basis, that your staff cares so much about the kids. They love the kids so much. So we're really, we're really proud of that and how much we, we care about kids, and we know that that's where it starts. Um, we also have a uh, rigorous and meaningful approach to instruction. So the curriculum that we use is all research-based. Um, all of our students um, have online accounts and we use different platforms that make it easy for them to access uh, all of their different curriculum platforms, which I'll talk about. We have frequent professional learning for our staff um, and blended learning that supports our 21st century learners. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and as I mentioned, we collaborate, you know, at, at all levels and consistently. So this is just part of what makes this, this school so fantastic is that we have um, not only history and we have sister schools to work with, but we also um, are working in real time on collaborative vision and, um, and organization. If you're not familiar with what a charter school is, just so that we all have that kind of baseline information about charter, charter schools are tuition free schools. So we're not a private school, we're publicly funded. Um, we're funded based on the number of students enrolled in our school. We're held accountable to the same state and federal academic standards, including participating in state exams that all other public schools are in the state of Nevada. We are governed by, um, a volunteer governing board. They monitor our, you know, our everything from our budget. We talk about student growth. We talk about process. Um, they've been very great in helping us navigate our procedures for COVID and things like that. Uh, charter schools provide you with a choice in your child's ed education um, and uh, ultimately lead to more autonomy for schools um, because we, you know, have the advantage of making decisions for our school site. So we have 711 students at our school um, and 54 staff members. So we get to make decisions based on what is best for our kids and for our teachers and our campus. Um, and that's, it's, it's really a, a, a great thing. We're not tied to, um, you know, having to make decisions that work for the entire system of schools. We're our own, our own charter. We also have class size maximums. So these class size maximums determine how many seats are available in each grade level and ultimately how many students will be accepting for each, um, each lottery round. So next year we'll have 25 students in each class in kindergarten and first grade, uh, 26 in second through fourth grade, 28 in fifth grade, and 31 in sixth through eighth grade. So for example, in kindergarten, 
we'll have four classes of 25, which means we'll have 100 seats. So what happens is that we have a lottery application. So we have 100 seats in kindergarten. If we have 200 students apply, 100 students will get a seat and 100 students will be put on a wait list. And students who are added to the wait list will get a seat as they, um, if, you know, if another student declines, um, then the seat becomes available for a student on the wait list. And I'm gonna jump over to the chat box real quick. Susan's asking about uh, data-driven instruction. And Susan, I will um, hopefully answer that question for you a little bit later on, but um, I will come back to it if it's not fully uh, covered in that, in that piece. Just a little glimpse at our team. Um, I'm of course the principal Curtis. Uh, Casey Smith is our assistant principal. Sunday Iyer serves as our ELL coordinator um, as well as our instructional coach. We have um, Carol Davis is our student behavior specialist. Uh, Heidi Capro is our school relations manager and Debbie or Doty is our office manager. So just uh, love to see the faces, you know, for when you do it up on campus, you have a little introduction to our team. So mo we don't have, we do have, um, and I'll talk about our shuttle partnership with Boys and Girls Club, but most of our students arrive on campus with um, in car or they walk to campus or ride their bikes. So one of the things that we do to help alleviate congestion and traffic is have a staggered start and end time. Our elementary campus for the purpose of start and end time is considered the K through four grades and they begin at nine and end school at 3.30. <coughs> Sorry, going over here to make sure. Oh, okay. The um, intermediate is our fifth grade and they have the same start and end time as our middle school. So fifth grade through eighth grade have a start time of 815 and a dismissal time of 245. Okay. Um, Alyssa, I'm gonna go over to the chat box really quick for a question that um, pertained to the lottery. So the question was, once you're admitted, are you admitted for all eight grades? So students who are admitted have the opportunity to re-enroll every year without having to participate again in the lottery. So as long as paperwork is submitted on time, um, and ahead of the lottery for the next year with, you know, you get emails, fill out your paperwork, do your registration, as long as all that is done, then your students have priority to return year after year and you don't have to apply for the lottery every year. And thank you, Heidi. Heidi's on it. Uh, will siblings be admitted together? So siblings have priority. So when we run the lottery, we start at the top. So we start with accepting students in eighth grade. So what happens is if you have an eighth grader and then you have a kindergartner, if your eighth grader gets a seat, then your kindergartner gets pulled for a seat. It's called sibling priority with our goal of keeping siblings at the same school. So same thing would be if you have you know, a sixth grader and a, and a first grader, the sixth grader would get a seat you know, first if there's a seat available and then the first grader. So we always uh, do what we can to keep our siblings together. We know it makes it much easier to have your children at the same school. Um, this is our board approved calendar for the 21-22 school year. Our school year starts on August 23rd next year. Um, we have a couple of um, the same holidays uh, that you would see typical um, and then we do have fall break is the same week that Washoe County School District is taking fall break. We have uh, Thanksgiving week, we're taking off three days. We have um, two weeks for winter break. Um, and then we have a long weekend for President's Day. Uh, only one week for spring break, which is one of the same weeks that Washoe County School District has their two week spring break. Um, and then we end school on June 3rd with those contingency weather days. Um, I love this calendar looks so um, plain compared to what the calendar ended up looking like this year with cohorts and different colors and rotations and things like that. So I must disclose like this is the, the baseline calendar. If we do have to make any, you know, changes and cohorts and things like that, it will become um, more colorful and <laughs> we'll communicate out about that as well. All right, so here are uh, some sample schedules. So um, our elementary school, typically what the schedule looks like for our elementary students, and this is grades um, kindergarten through four. So the um, arrival starts at 8.40. They can be dropped off at school as soon as 8.40. 
in the morning, the teacher has a, an SEL or morning meeting. This year, we've also implemented a wellness check time. They have some time to do their um, reading lessons in their homeroom class. They do, we do teach handwriting, so they have time for handwriting. We have recess and snack time built in. Um, this is a sample schedule. So in some cases that you know, that might be in the afternoon, in some cases it's in the morning, depending on the, the grade level. We have time for um, blended learning or what is time for our interventions through Sabbath. That's a time that students work on our computer-based programs to do differentiated instruction at their level. We have um, also power hour reading. So this is also a time for differentiated instruction. Students have lunch um, and recess. They take time to work in their small groups um, for math, as well as differentiated instructional time for math. We have time built in for specials classes, and we'll, I'll talk about those in a minute, as well as writing. And then we have silent dismissal. So we use a, an app called School Pass, so students stay in their classroom until uh, parents arrive on campus via our car line. We have a system where we put numbers into the computer to release students from class. So they get to stay in their class until you arrive. The middle school, um, so fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth look a little bit different. Students do rotate through classes. Um, the arrival time for our middle school is eight o'clock. So between eight and 8.15 is that coming in time. Then students participate in four different block periods and then have uh, about 35 minutes between their recess and lunchtime in the middle of the day. Um, and I will, I must say this year, um, we've made some modifications to this, to both of these schedules to accommodate for some things that we needed to do for COVID, including social distancing and, and all of that. But normally, and what we're hoping for next year is that we get to get a little bit more normal um, and align a little bit more with what um, our original schedule looks like. So here we are with that. I'm gonna look, are there any questions on schedule? Nope, all right. So the structure of learning at Pinecrest Academy is that we start with our core curriculum and all students participate in our um, Nevada Academic Core Content Standards Aligned Curriculum. Students who need additional support for either academics or behavior um, are referred to what we call our SABIT team, where teachers do some targeted interventions depending on what student needs are, um, and maybe collaborate with our instructional coach or behavior specialist, depending on what the student needs are. Um, and then there's that support piece. So anything from referral for special education services to um, maybe some outside support or collaborating with another grade level teacher to make sure that students are really accessing and retaining content is all part of our learning structure. Currently, our core curriculum for English language arts for grades K through five is the McGraw-Hill Reading Wonders program. Students have a text that they utilize in class as well as access to the online platform. So for uh, students this year who are participating in distance learning, all of those assignments are accessed through the Google Classroom and completed electronically, but students also have a copy, a hard copy of the text. In grades six and seven, we have um, the spring board, which is the college board curriculum for ELA. In all grades K through seven, or what'll be K through eight next year, uh, we also participate in the iReady curriculum, which is the curriculum associates platform. Um, and this iReady is based on the computer adaptive testing. So students take a, a assessment at the beginning of the year that gives us baseline data on where they're coming to us at in terms of uh, five different core ELA standards. So everything from what is their spelling, reading comprehension, different types of texts, um, different, how do they use uh, conventions, all, all of those aspects. And then once um, they once they participate in that beginning of the year assessment, they are given a individualized learning path. So that means a student might be working on grade level and a different student next to them in the same class might be working below grade level and working towards grade level. And another student might be working above grade level. So this is the individualized instructional path that's available for them um, in iReady. Also, as each grade level has a different number of minutes that students are required to complete each week in, their, in the iReady um, platform. 
And uh, there's also a correlation to the number of minutes and lessons that students do and their, and their growth. So the computer adaptive test, when they come in the middle of the year, and our students are currently working on uh, math this week for their mid-year assessment, they'll be doing reading next week right now. Um, but what that lets us do is that there's no cap to their growth. We get to see you know, where they came to us um, at, and then you know, the, the number of lessons that they've completed, the work that they've done, how their learning path has shifted, um, and the growth in the middle of the year. And we do have the iReady program for math as well. The core math, we have two pieces from the curriculum associates. So one is that iReady, which is the computer adaptive platform. But the other important piece is that that doesn't mean that we don't teach grade level content. So students still, if, you know, if you're in second grade, students still need to learn second grade curriculum and have access and are taught second grade curriculum, but also have differentiated instruction at their rate and level through the iReady Math program. And that's what they do um, during the power hour time. That's also something that they would be participating at home um, or in during their blended learning time. For students in middle school, we have the springboard curriculum, which is the College Board um, math program, um, as well as iReady for all of our students in K through eight. You've probably um, heard that we are a STEAM school. Our sister schools in Las Vegas are um, three of uh, five of them are designated STEM schools with the governor's STEM school designation. So uh, that is something when STEM gets uh, the designation start being um, allocated again that we will be looking to do. Our focus with science and STEAM um, is the curriculum STEM scopes, which is aligned to the NGSS science standards. Students have their science curriculum also in their class with their homeroom teacher and then also in our STEAM lab. So we have an open lab space. It's one of the most beautiful classrooms on our campus where students get to participate in, in hands-on experiments and learning and um, creation. Uh, STEAM, if you're not familiar with the acronym, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Mathematics. So students in that space are doing everything from learning about the water cycle and experimenting with evaporation and condensation and those things to static electricity and blowing up balloons and figuring out you know which different types of materials conduct electricity the best and things like that. So it's about giving our students um, a mind of creativity and exploration and a place for them to, uh, to try new things and ask questions and find answers. So iReady, the iReady program is, um, as I mentioned, that's the diagnostic assessment that we use to measure student growth and where teachers um, help shape that individual learning pathway for our students. The special classes that we offer, I'll talk about those more in a minute, but we have music, art, the STEAM lab, the media um, and library space, as well as PE and Spanish class. In ELA, one of our focal points for reading is that we focus on reading across all content areas. So even in our STEM scopes curriculum, it's very um, literature rich. So the students have access to different articles pertaining to science. We have also partnership and access to discovery education platform where students can access nonfiction texts in, at all different grade levels, all different interest levels. Um, so we really focus on not just teaching reading as um, for the, the base skills of reading, but as, as a tool for students to pursue their interests and to, to gather and learn information. All right, these are, these are the little uh, our curriculum logos. One piece of our curriculum I haven't mentioned yet is with this little penguin named Gigi. This is ST Math. Um, ST Math is an addition that we have in math for our K through five students. ST math is what's referred to as cerebral temporal math. It's a pictorial math. It's basically math without words. And the research behind ST math is that for students who struggle more with the verbal side of math, still have an opportunity to practice and retain the conceptual side of math um, and gain their understanding in math without having to, um, to do the, the processing, the verbal side of math. So for example, um, a problem in, in an ST math puzzle might mean that a student is trying to make a sum of 12. And what the puzzle would look like is it might be a picture of uh, seven 
uh, rhinoceroses and how many more rhinoceroses does it do there need to get like 12 rhinoceroses across a river and the student would use a little puzzle and you know try to manipulate the puzzle to figure out how many so it's there's no words to it it's very conceptual uh, for our students that participate in especially those that might have a profile of dyslexia or have a harder time processing verbally they get into st math and can do those puzzles and figure it out so quickly um, I know sometimes I get feedback from parents. They're like, it's so hard. I don't understand it. I don't, there's no words. So it, the research behind it is fantastic. If you're interested, um, I would suggest Googling ST Math TED Talk, and you can listen to the whole breakdown about um, the research behind ST Math and why it works um, and why we utilize that. All right. Um, just an indication of academic performance historically with Pinecrest schools in Nevada. Our sister schools are five star schools in both elementary and middle school. Um, and as I mentioned, four out of five of them um, are designated STEAM or STEM schools by the state. All right, here's a little a uh, snippet from our um, special classes in the elementary um, and intermediate grades. So students working um, in music class on music composition, um, in the STEAM lab working on static electricity. We do have a beautiful turf field on the south side of our campus. So students participate. Um, this year they're participating in PE every single day, which has been a really fantastic outlet for them to uh, to burn energy and just practice all of all of the skills that are associated with physical education. Uh, students also have art class in our art space um, and media class where they learn technology, keyboarding, uh, program access. Um, some of our middle school students are doing app uh, coding. Uh, so all all different levels of break it, please. science standards. All right. Um, and in middle school, moving up in grades a little bit as the content gets a little bit more challenging, the students take um, in art will have a choice um, between mixed, mixed media, which is the painting, drawing, sketching, um, as well as clay. So we have a, a kiln room. So they'll be they'll have a chance to participate in ceramics if that's more interesting to them. For music, we have band, choir, and orchestra. Uh, in this, we have the STEAM lab as an elective class for middle school, along with the maker space. Next year, we'll be, thanks to uh, the computer science grant that we were awarded from the state, be able to offer Project Lead the Way robotics and coding classes. So two different courses that'll be available for our middle school students, um, as well as physical education. We um, will have Spanish language for them, as well as a yearbook and digital photography. Pretty exciting, they stay pretty busy at school. I have some pictures there on the screen. All right, so family um, and student support, our commitment to our families is that um, number one in a K, this is a K-8 school setting. K-8 school settings allow for many opportunities for student leadership and partnership across our campus. Um, I myself have four children that attend Pinecrest. I have two in elementary school and two in middle school. Um, I absolutely love the concept of a K-8 school for middle schoolers, especially because they are called to be leaders. They are called to, you know, at the same time they, they see they're with young kids, so they still get to be a kid, but then at the same time, they know they're the oldest ones on campus and they are, uh, we very much um, encourage them in their leadership role on campus. We also um, provide uh, study support for and strategies for remote learning. So we, of course, by necessity, participate have you know virtual learning this year and hybrid learning and all of those things. Um, but we also proactively requested a an amendment to our charter to allow us to offer distance learning next year and you know going forward, even if there's not a necessary exemption for all schools to do distance learning. So we've just found that this is something that for for different reasons students. Um, can access curriculum differently. And for some students, that's quite positive. So we do um, and will continue to offer that. Our um, 
academic content is rich this year i'm our teachers have been amazing so we've done what's called remote live instruction so our teacher our teachers are so fantastic they've been able to teach not just students in the classroom and not just students on zoom but they teach students in the classroom and on zoom simultaneously we had um, an evaluate or a, a site evaluation from the state charter authority where they actually came in and got to kind of see what this looks like and they said wow your teachers are incredible the kids in zoom and the kids in, on campus like they they it feels like they're all in the same space because they've mastered the art of really engaging in person and and virtually so uh, just knowing that what our teachers have been able to do and how they've been able to utilize these tools this year out of necessity is exciting for years to come and what that's going to look like for instruction next year. All of our students have devices to support uh, remote learning. So our students who needed Chromebooks or who needed access to internet um, hotspots, we were able to give all of our students those devices that needed them. And then we strongly believe in social and emotional learning. Uh, we know that the core of students being prepared to learn and engage in the campus environment is that their, their basic needs and their social emotional needs are met. And we have designated staff to support those needs. So everything from you know, a student who needs to have a conversation because maybe they they lost, you know, a beloved pet and they just need to have that little piece before they're ready to learn to um, really strategically doing conflict management and resolution with our students. We know that social and emotional learning, um, as well as teaching what we call the eight habits or those life skills for class is at the core of everything that we do. So teaching our students to be self-aware, teaching them to have good relationships, teaching them to, um, to problem solve, how to advocate for themselves. Um, the seven habits are based on Stephen Covey's seven habits of highly effective people. Uh, we've added the new one, the eighth habit in there. So we teach the eight habits to our students. Um, every conversation that we have from the classroom to administration is based on those and um, having students reflect um, and at times find their voice or prioritize their learning differently, um, put first things first. And from even from our young kindergartners all the way up to middle school, um, they utilize that vocabulary and make those associations. And then um, I have to mention our partnership with our incredible PTO. So we, you know, th we're a new school, new school year, and we have a brand new PTO. And our PTO is um, absolutely phenomenal. They've done so many different events just to promote community, to help raise money for our school, to help share about our school, to help make sure that every family who has a need at our school, those needs are met. Um, and it's just part of, of why we all subscribe to the Pinecrest School community. There's always opportunities to, to join and participate with the PTO. As a school, uh, we are also completely invested in having a diverse school community. So this is not just something that, you know, from our board and from our school leadership, we're like, yes, we wanna have a diverse school community. Um, we have done a lot in terms of making sure that we're reaching different parts of our community. Um, we've been able, even just this week, we've had um, open virtual open house events in Spanish led by one of our, our staff members who um, was able to, to lead out in that and answer questions um, and share um, where we know that a diverse school community is more enriching for all of our students, that having those experiences, conversations, opportunities make students more college and career ready. Um, and we firmly believe that and subscribe to that and are very um, passionate about making sure that our school is accessible to all students um, whose parents choose and whose students choose um, Pinecrest as their school of choice. We know that diverse school communities mean that students are better prepared. So students who attend more diverse schools um, are able to have more growth and reflection. They, ac they actually show higher academic growth and achievement and learn better how to relate to others. Um, students who attend, who attend diverse schools also um, are more mindful and tolerant, 
And ultimately, we want a reflection of what our students' experience is at our school to prepare them for life in college um, and in the workplace and in community. So it's really important to, to us as a school um, that our students know how to get along with all different people, that they learn to respect each other, um, that we you know, know how to problem solve and talk through you know, any conflicts that we have. We also know that our students um, will be 21st century ready. So again, they have that capacity to interact with those that are different than them um, and they can share ideas freely and share their knowledge freely. Um, in this environment and this capacity, students learn how to collaborate and engage differently with each other. So we're not just you know, saying that this is something we want them to do, we provide opportunities for them to do this. So when they're in STEAM lab and they're having to work together, how to figure out you know, how to solve a problem or make a, a car move, they have, to, they have to brainstorm and they know that people who have different ideas than them working together make uh, for better outcomes and results. And it leads to more discovery and innovation, which is what we want for all of our kids. All right, so I am going to pause here and I don't see any questions in the chat. We're joined by Michelle Worley. She is our on-site coordinator for the Boys and Girls Club of Truckee Meadows Pinecrest Campus site and is going to talk to us about registration, um, pricing, and all of that. Are you ready, Michelle? I am. Thank you so much, Jamie. Can I just get a thumbs up that everybody can hear me okay? I'm a little far from the laptop and I don't like shouting at people I've never met. <laughs> All right. As Jamie said, my name is Michelle. I am the coordinator here for the Boys and Girls Club at Pinecrest, which is just a beautiful partnership that has never happened before with the Boys and Girls Club in all of the United States. For those of you who don't know the Boys and Girls Club, I want to give a little bit of a background there and then I'll talk more about what that beautiful collaboration is. And so Boys and Girls Club, the mission they have very similar to what Jamie was just talking about, it's to enable youth to be responsible, caring, productive citizens. So our staff are those who are caring professionals that are mentors. So kind of not necessarily in that teacher role, not necessarily in the parent role or the friend role, just those who are young adults that can be mentors to kids who still want that safe space. And so the three main things that we always talk about is the Boys and Girls Club is a safe, fun, and now I am blanking on the third one. Safe, fun. Oh, it's on our website, which you will see. Oh, that's the pressure of being on a Zoom meeting that you guys get to feel. <laughs> um, so uh, the, those two big things though, safety is huge. And we've made a lot of big changes in our own curriculum to make sure that safety is in the club and respecting COVID-19 procedures. And um, we now are in a very big, beautiful space here in the Pinecrest Boys and Girls, uh, the cafeteria. And so all of the kiddos, have their own assigned seat when they're coming in either for our before school or the after school program. We also have a distance learning program in a separate room. So the kiddos have their own seat and we're able to either if it's before or after school provide homework help and also give them time to do our club activities which fall into many different programs. We have um, diverse needs and interests in all of our members and we try to hit those and that comes into what we call our five core areas and that's character and leadership development, healthy lifestyles, STEM, so big STEM school, um, arts and sports and fitness recreation. So depending on the time frame or if it is a day where there isn't school and we are here every single day, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., we are providing these types of enrichment programs for the kiddos after school. What's beautiful about this unique collaboration is that we are actually here on campus all day at Pinecrest. And the typical Boys and Girls Club is a clubhouse for those of you who might have seen us before, or just a before and after school program. And that's at the other school sites that we're at. 
So here, because we have opened up the doors for a distance learning program, we also have the ability to be here during the children's lunch time. So we also help out during the lunch and recess. And just with that, I have seen such beautiful relationships being formed, not just with our club members, but also with other students in the school. And these students now know that there is another mentor, there is another safe place to go to when they, you know, just as Jamie's example, I had that actually happen today. Somebody had their poor little pet pass away and we got down and talked about that. Um, so, you know, in those happy moments and those sad moments, we're here. And so that's kind of that big heart that makes us come into work every single day. But in talking about the different programs that we provide, just to be more clear, it's before and after school. So that's 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. And that's for both middle school and elementary school. And then the distance learning is for the middle school time. So either 8 a.m. to 2.45 or 9 a.m. to 3.30 for the elementary. And then for the after school, 2.45 starting for the middle school, 3.30 for the elementary. And we go around and actually pick them up door to door, say hello to the teachers and bring them to the safe space here at the school and go outside, have a little play time and come in, do our work. And we actually, do serve a hot meal every night as well so they can have a little bit of dinner around about 4 30 and um, then we out close our doors at 6 p.m so we have a sister site that is at the ninth street location and that ninth street location they close their doors at 7 p.m so we actually for those who maybe their work schedule is just a little off or they're not able to get all the way up to spanish springs we do have a bus and so that bus is either in sparks or in sun valley and uh, we are trying to open up to more routes as well. So the more kiddos that we get in different areas, the more that we can open up those routes. And we pick up every morning at about 7.15, 7.30 and bring the kids up to school. And depending on their grade level, they'll either join the morning program that we have or they'll go straight to class. And then for the after school, for like I said, those who just might be able to not make that 6 p.m. cutoff time, we actually have a bus that leaves here at 530 that then takes the children who still need to be picked up all the way down to our ninth street location by 7 p.m. would be the pickup time there. So there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of coordination partnership there. And the big thing is we just want to make sure that kids, oh, I remembered the third one, positive. <laughs> we wanna make sure the kids have a safe, fun and positive environment. And a part of that positive culture, another very unique thing for our collaboration at Pinecrest is that we continue those eight healthy habits that Jamie was talking about and incorporate Incorporate that into our programming and really work on instilling good characters and good character and good citizenship in our students and making sure that that message is cohesive and not being forgotten in the before or after school. And so Boys and Girls Club comes in as that united support system for the Pinecrest mission. I know I just put a lot of stuff out there for you guys. Um, and I see that there's a lot of information about registration and enrollment. And um, I don't know if like for my screen, it looks like there's a bit of a cutoff on what the pricing is here. But I just wanna let you know that we have never turned somebody down because of financial aid or anything in that regard, that cost is not an issue. So if there's anything that you guys need to discuss in that regard, or you're just curious of the different pricing, the daily rates for the before and after school, please uh, put it up in the chat box or you feel free to email me as well. And my email is actually quite easy to remember. It's just pinecrest at bgctm.org. Uh, thank you, Michelle. And I know one thing that is is very appealing to our families is that even the cost for full time before and after care every day is forty dollars a week. So for a student to attend before and after care five days a week and distance learning, all they'll pay is forty dollars. So 
Correct. We certainly appreciate being able to offer that increase. Such yeah. great rates. All right, I think there might be one more slide just with your contact information there. Yes, there we are. And you that's your uh, the extension here at the school. So yes. feel free to jot that down, take a screenshot, whatever you need. Um, Michelle, I, someone did ask about the sibling discount. Yeah. What's the rate? I was about to answer that. Yeah, so the sibling discount goes for the weekly fees, not exactly for the daily fees. So the first child is $40 for the entire week. And that, as Jamie had said, is the before and after school included, as well as distance learning, or even those all day club days where there might be virtual days. Um, the school does a few here and there when they're doing their professional development days. And we're still here on site, as I said, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., providing that support to help students zoom in and get all of their assignments finished and completed for the day. So um, on days like that, or just in the general weekly, $40 for the first kiddo 32 for the second so it's an eight dollar discount for the second and then 24 for the third child and any children after that so if you have five children for instance the first one would be 40 the second would be 32 and the next three would be 24 dollars each weekly and as i said as well we have scholarship programs available that very easy quick application and a lot of people usually come to me and say oh i probably won't be qualified for it and uh, you would be very surprised. I also just saw from Jessica a question about us being here on breaks. Yes, we are here during the upcoming spring break and we're making some plans right now with the principal to be here during the summer as well and open ourselves up to the community. So we are here on holidays like the upcoming President's Day and a big part of that is our mission is to be here to support not just the students, the children, the community, but parents as well. And I know some of us really enjoy a four day weekend, but not all of us get that four day weekend. So we're always here to provide that support. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah. All right. Is uh, Jessica, uh, just to reiterate, uh, you had just asked about the $40, could you just clarify, you asked, is that included in the $40? Do you mean the breaks? Okay, <laughs> she said yes. So um, just depending on what the break is, so if they're, for example, uh, the last week we had Martin Luther King Day, that is technically a break day um, where there's no school and we do not charge on holidays. Whereas for spring break, it would just be the $40 flat rate. Did that answer your question, Jessica? Not here. Oh, we got a yes, thank you. All right, I'm glad. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. And again, um, that pinecrest at bgctm.org uh, if you have questions for Michelle. It was so lovely meeting you all. Let, thank you so much for letting me say a few words on behalf of Boys and Girls Club. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, Jamie. Um, within um, our partnership with the Boys and Girls Club, we also participate in the National School Lunch Program. So free and reduce, the free and reduced lunch um, offering is available for our students. Um, Boys and Girls Club is our lunch provider partner this year. So we have a full kitchen, but all of the meals are, pre are prepared offsite at Boys and Girls Club and then uh, brought in every single day in their food truck and served in our um, in our cafeteria here on site. That transportation that Michelle was talking about for after school is also an extension of our partnership before school. So those two sites are available, um, the transportation from Sun Valley and from our Sparks location, which is right there at the Scolaris in downtown Sparks. Um, both of those morning um, program options are available as well as the afternoon transportation back to Ninth Street. Um, and as Michelle mentioned, the Boys and Girls Club scholarships. Awesome. And uh, we do have the dinner service this year. Is that something that will be going on next year too, do you think? Or is that a, is that a 2021 school year thing? Oh, it's to, it's to stay permanently. It's that to hot stay. Meal. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, our students get, they serve dinner at, of what, about 4.30? 
they yes. get a hot meal tonight they had like ribs and mashed potatoes and breadsticks and <laughs> Before, awesome. when we had first started out we were just doing our little snack after school and the hungry masses spoke and so a hot meal came instead and <laughs> a lot of the kids go home they're like i had double dinner today <laughs> they're always very excited i really appreciate that and yeah. it, it makes it so much easier i know i'm working most of the time past six o'clock and for my kids to you, you come home after a long day of working and they've been fed and their homework's done and all of that it's like it's awesome you get to do all the right. fun stuff yeah you do the fun stuff thank you again thanks so much of course. I wanted to touch on um, just some of what we've put in place for health and safety this year. Of course, uh, you know, we our, our prescription this year is flexibility. So not knowing exactly what next year is going to hold, just to share a little bit about what we have going on. Uh, but we do have a, a registered nurse on site as well as a CNA. Um, that run our health office. Our students right now participate in health screenings and wellness checks every day. We use an app system that's part of our silent dismissal system for students to indicate if they, like right now it would indicate if they had you know, a contact with COVID or any of the symptoms or anything like that. So it's important to us that we have really wrap around um, uh, just thinking about our students and taking care of them at all at all levels. We've um, educated our students on hand washing and respiratory hygiene and using the hand sanitizer. Um, some of the things we've put in place this year include the 50% capacity in all of our classrooms. We're currently operating under an exemption that's 40% of our campus um, capacity. So I'm uh, just really trying to, to limit the proximity of students and the number of students in a confined space at a single time as well as um, having students use their own individual supplies and installing hand sanitizing stations throughout our campus. We also have a partnership with a company called Hazel Health. Um, Hazel Health is in um, a online based uh, doctor's visit program. So essentially if a student presents in the health office with something that um, normally they might need to be seen in a physician's office for, let's say they have an earache, if uh, the family has signed up with Hazel Health and it's free, they don't, it doesn't cost anything, but they go to the health office, we have everything set up in there with Hazel Health, including an iPad. Um, and then with either the nurse or CNA, they would um, initiate a virtual doctor's visit right from school um, with parents having the opportunity to also join in to the visit that can take place right in the nurse's office. So then the, the student would be in there with the physician on the iPad and the school nurse right there. And sometimes the parent also on the, um, on the, on the call. And, and they go through the whole exam with the school nurse or the CNA who's on site helping to administer some of the pieces that they can't do virtually. Um, and in some instances that can, those visits can result in the student being administered a prescription or a medication at school that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to. Um, and it saves the parent from having, you know, that they can call in the prescription directly to the pharmacy if that's something that's warranted. So it, the student then can go right back to class. So in certain situations, um, what our goal is with that is to minimize the time that's lost from instruction and the amount of, you know, disruption of what it is to student learning if there's um, different health issues if we can you know of course there's times that students have to leave campus for different things but for a number of things this is is just been really fantastic we've also spent a, a great deal of of time and effort educating our students about COVID-19 and health and safety protocols including signage all across our campus um, as I mentioned we have the silent dismissal system so we've really mitigated the flow of traffic um, with students you know exiting the building and walking through um, our spaces, um, as well as um, the school lunch program where students have their individual service of lunch. So they're not all, they're not all touching lunch, only the, the food handlers are touching the food that they're consuming. On our campus, we have custodial staff that comes every single night to clean our building. We have the hand, sanit hand sanitizing stations. Um, we frequently clean the high touch surface areas like the, the light switches and doorknobs and things like that. Um, as well as disinfecting our playground areas. So our students right now are utilizing our outdoor spaces, including our playground areas. Um, and we have a whole cleaning process that we do at night to make sure that those surfaces are sanitized. Um, and then our deep, right now we still have a virtual day every week on Wednesday. And our uh, those days are our deep cleaning days where 
Um, the team comes in, our um, contracted janitorial team comes in with lights and they actually make sure that they use UV light to make sure that things are um, clean and disinfected in our spaces. Um, and then again, we have, you know, all of our students wear masks at school. I don't know, I, I'm asked the question every single day, like, are they gonna have to wear masks next year? I don't know. Do we know? Nobody knows. So uh, that is something that we have um, just put in place as a norm on our campus that students have done um, really surprisingly well at, um, you know, at, at maintaining. All right. I think I wanted to end with our mission, which is Pinecrest Academy of Northern Nevada unites the community to prepare students for college and career. And our vision is where scholars perform at the highest level on all academic measures. The contact information for our leadership team is here on the screen. If you would like to take a screenshot of that so you can see who to reach out to, I will say that our email system is currently down. So if you were to send an email, um, don't expect to hear back from any of us until early next week, I'm thinking. Um, and there's also a new, um, the application on our website is also currently being updated. So there's a new link that I posted in the email. If you received an email from me this evening, the new application link is in there. So if you already filled out the previous application, that's fine. Um, but if you haven't yet, and after this presentation today, you're interested in applying, that application link was in the email that I sent out earlier this evening. All right. I'm gonna jump over to the chat box. All right, so uh, Roberta had a question, is tutoring available? So one thing that we have just launched that's so exciting, um, so we have Boys and Girls Club for our before and after school, but we also have an exciting um, enrichment program called Rams Academy that we just launched. They actually, the classes started this week. So we have um, over 20 different academic, athletic, music, art classes that um, are being offered to our students after school. These are offered by um, a number of different community partners as well as our teaching staff. Um, and what students get to do is participate in those classes of interest. So everything from drama to art to tutoring in some cases. Um, and we have uh, the students have the capacity to leave their classroom and go straight to the after school enrichment programming. So for um, for some, for some families, it's nice that they, you know, you don't have to come pick up your student and take them to dance class, you know, on the other side of town, we're offering some of those things in house through Rams Academy. Um, let's see, Alyssa was asking, sorry, I'm trying to go up the question chain here real quick. Are parents able to help out in the classroom, assuming after COVID regulations lift? Uh, so we absolutely um, encourage parent volunteers on our campus. Um, of course, that is very limited right now, but typically um, things returning to normal, yes, parents would um, in conjunction with the teacher and the teacher's needs for structuring volunteer support in their classroom have the capacity to do that. Marcy was asking if the sixth or eighth graders are attending school every day. So right now they're attending two days in person and two days virtual, but I'm very excited because the first week in February, our um, students in sixth and seventh grade will be coming to all four days on campus with just the one virtual deep cleaning day. So beginning the first week in February, they will be here four days a week, which is so exciting. Um, Alyssa was asking if they can participate in Washoe County sports. So as of right now, um, and things again are flexible, um, we have a guest partnership with the Ta Neva League. So what our goal is for next year is that in um, as members of the Ta Neva League, our students will participate in boys and girls basketball, as well as track and field, cross country and volleyball. Um, beyond that, so if there's a sport outside of that that we don't offer, um, I don't, I don't have, I've not had an experience where a student participated in a sport inside a district school when they attended a charter school. So for example, if they're attending Pinecrest and they want to play basketball, they would have to play on the Pinecrest basketball team. They could not play on like the Washoe County Middle School team. 
but hopefully between Rams Academy and those middle school sports, there's something that appeals to everyone. Um, are there gates? So um, this year we did not offer a specific gate class. Students that came, that have come to us with, um, that have already been identified as gate uh, would just participate in enriched instruction in the classroom and then have their learning pathways and their diagnostic paths in iReady. Um, however, that is something that we are looking at implementing next school year. So uh, second grade and up will go through that the gate screening in the spring with students um, with the, the matrix being identified in the late spring for us to be able to offer gate as one of their pullout enrichments next year. Lindsay says, first, uh, my daughter has an IEP and receiving resource hours every day. Yes, so we have three resource teachers. We have um, a K2, a, a 2-5, and then a 5 through 7th grade. Um, and then we offer all kinds of support services, everything from speech, occupational therapy, adaptive PE, um, auditory services, behavioral services. So anything, um, you know, any, any, um, educational need that a student has in their IEP, we accommodate. We are um, an inclusion model school, so we don't have self-contained programs. So students that come to our school participate in the general education setting most of their day. So with limited time in the resource room and most of their time with their general ed peers in their, in their classroom. Um, let's see. Thank you, Gerald. So the STEAM certification. Um, and what other ways do you anticipate PAN growing and evolving in the future? So um, I'm really excited to launch Project Lead the Way this coming school year. So we did get um, a, a pretty awesome grant with the computer science grant from the state. Um, and part of that vision is over the next five years for all of our students in grades K through eight to participate in computer science classes. And that's a little bit different um, tiered curriculum at every single grade level. So definitely um, having computer fluency for our students at all ages, everything from keyboarding to, um, to apps and programming is something that uh, we anticipate having in the next five years. Um, and as well as expanding our, um, especially for our middle schoolers, our athletic program offering. So the Taniva League is an organization that also pulls in some schools from Lake Tahoe, from Carson City, as well as the Reno Sparks area. So just increasing our, our collaboration and you know, capacity to provide athletics for our middle schoolers is really important. Uh, we also have some fantastic partnerships with our community, including the University of Nevada, Reno with Tesla, um, and with a, um, a number of other entities in town. And so I really, um, what my hope is, is that especially as we kind of get past COVID that we're able to expand the STEAM operations, including working with um, some of the greenhouse organizations in town, trying to make sure that our students have active living projects that they're doing with that work and not just classroom projects. So I see that uh, very much taking off over the course of the next three to five years. Have graduated students from Pinecrest been tracked with regards to their performance in high school? In other words, how do they perform in high school? So, um, so Marcy, this Pinecrest Academy of Northern Nevada, you know, specifically, this is our first year as a school site in operation. Our sister schools in Las Vegas have high schools. So many of the students, um, if they attend the K-8 campuses, filter over to the Pinecrest 912 campuses and participate in Pinecrest High School. Um, in terms of their performance in high school and how that filters into college, I don't actually have specifics on that, but I think it's a very good question. And I will definitely reach out to um, Jessica Leneve, one of the principals at Pinecrest Cadence, and I'm sure she has that information and I will be happy to get that and share it because I think that is a really great question. Um, Sean was asking how many spots we have open for first grade. So in first grade, we'll have a hundred, we have a hundred seats. Um, right now we're looking at about a 90% retention rate. So um, today we have about 90 of our kindergartners saying that they're going to start in first grade, which means we'll have 10 seats for first grade.
Sure, Marcy, I'd be happy to describe the lottery process. So open enrollment is now through February 28th. So with that application link that was in the email that I sent, you can fill out the application. Um, and then what happens is we have a database that collects all of the applications. And then on March 1st, we run the lottery. So it's a computer generated um, lottery, it's, it's run completely offsite. I have nothing to do with it. Um, and the lottery will run um, kind of overnight from February 28th to March 1st. And what happens is the computer will say we have 100 seats. It'll take all of the applicants for the seats. It'll pull the sibling priorities. It'll, um, you know, it'll pull any uh, other priorities, like if we have staff members, new staff members coming in and bringing kids, um, and then it'll pull kids from the lottery. So basically the computer takes all of the names, it's like a hat, and pulls some of the names to fill those seats. And on the morning of March 1st, families receive an email that'll say, you, congratulations, you, you know, you've got a seat in first grade, or thank you for applying, here's your place on the wait list, Be, feel free to check this website, and there's a link, and you can frequently check the status of your application. So you'll see, um, you know, if you're number 12 on the wait list, you can check back and see, you know, if you're moving on the wait list, if you, you know, move up to number eight, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so someone asked for sixth grade, so sixth grade is going to be a a good thing if you have a sixth grader. So one good thing is that we have three fifth grade classes and they'll be rolling up to three sixth grade classes, but our sixth grade class sizes are slightly larger. So we have off the top of my head, we have 20, we'll have about 20 seats in sixth grade. Um, so that is, uh, that's a really good thing. If you have a sixth grader, I would definitely, or a fifth grader going into sixth grade, definitely encourage you to apply. Um, because we don't that a growth year doesn't happen every year. So we have a growth year happening in eighth grade, a growth year happening in sixth grade, um, and a growth year happening in fifth grade. So um, for those three grades, that is that's a good much, you know, there's more seats available. So a higher likelihood of being able to get a seat in those grades. Um, and then Lauren for kindergarten, we'll have a hundred seats. So we'll have four classes of 25. Um, and then Roberta saying, my child's current school is asking me to register for next year by the end of the month. So if I don't, okay, so what will happen is you um, can, you could go ahead and register at, the, if the school's asking you for register, they're probably trying to plan their numbers and their allocations. So you can go ahead and register. And then if you get a, if you're selected and your, your student gets a seat on March 1st, um, you'll get another email to fill out your registration paperwork for Pinecrest. And then at that time, you would just notify the, the school that they're currently attending that they got a seat at Pinecrest and you're going to register them at Pinecrest. We'll request a records transfer from them and then all the records will be sent over here. So um, there's no, you know, you have the capacity to do that, to register and then change your mind. Um, with us, we because we're a charter, we have a lottery and a time for open enrollment and a window. Um, but the district schools don't have that same, they're a continuous, a continuous open enrollment. Um, Gerald asked, one of the things that attracted us to Pinecrest was the emphasis on diverse populations growing and learning together. Is diversity factored into the lottery? So um, just based on the way that Nevada statute is currently written and what we're allowed to do is that our board um, has allotted a five point weight allocation for those that qualify for free and reduced lunch. And free and reduced lunch status is the only status by which we can weight the lottery at this point. So um, and those income guidelines are listed on, um, on the application. You can, um, when you click on the form, one of the things will ask you that question. Um, and you will, in that point, provide documentation about qualifying for free and reduced lunch, which I will say it's not, um, you know, the guidelines are, you know, it's not as, as the, the earning levels aren't maybe what you would think. So go ahead and look at those because it's, it's quite surprising, especially if you have a few kids. <laughs> so uh, many people qualify that didn't you know, even realize to look at the guidelines prior. So um, that definitely is, um, you know, right now that's the only way that there's a weight it's associated with um, FRL. Of course, you're welcome. Um, Sean is asking if there's any current openings in kindergarten, is it possible to switch now? Um, so we currently have a wait list in kindergarten. Um, 
for this year, but I always say apply, like it doesn't hurt anything to apply this year. You never know <laughs> what happens, um, but kindergarten's full and we have a wait list this year. So applying for, um, I would apply for kindergarten this year, just in case, like I said, you never know, um, and then apply again for first grade next year. And then if you were to end up getting a seat this year for kindergarten, you would not need to reapply for next year. You would get um, returning student priority. And Alyssa asked, do wait lists start over per year? Yes, they do. So if you're currently on the wait list in kindergarten and let's say your number is 16, and then now you wanna go ahead and apply for a first grade, your student never got a seat, then you apply for a first grade, it's a new lottery. So you don't, you know, your place on the wait list changes, you could get a seat, you could get another wait list number. That's a really good question. Do we have any openings for fifth grade this year? Uh, we don't, we have a wait list in fifth grade too. So we have three classes in fifth grade um, and we do have a wait list. But again, I always say apply because you just never know. People move, all kinds of things happen. So um, you can always apply for fifth grade this year. And then again, I would recommend applying for sixth grade for the 21-22 school year as well. Um, how many seats for fifth grade, um, Roberta, for this year or for next year? So for, for this year, um, for this year, we have um, three classes of fifth grade um, and we have a wait list. Um, next year, we will have four classes. So we'll have about 20 seats in fifth grade. So anytime there's more seats available, you know, the odds always depend on how many people are applying in those different grades. Um, but you never know. And the lottery is the lottery. It just does what it does. So I would always recommend applying. Um, Alyssa asked how many people applied for kindergarten last year or for this year. Okay, so for this year, um, I'm going really off the top of my head. It's ballpark 190 applied for kindergarten this year. Um, that's really off the top, like somewhere around 190. Um, currently for next year, we have currently on the applications, I think we're around 150 right now for next year for kindergarten. Great questions. All right. If anyone has any other questions, feel free to put those in the chat. But thank you um, so much. I do have um, a couple of, of staff members on here um, who joined us. So thank you to those uh, teachers that are on here, um, our behavior specialists. We have some second grade teachers on the call, our um, ELL coordinator and instructional coach. Uh, thank you so much. Um, do any of you want to add anything to our um, for our guests? Feel free to. Hi, this is Sunday Iyer. I'm the instructional coach and ELL coordinator, um, and I just have to say that. Um, First, I look forward to meeting all of you. I hope you get a spot and come to our school next year. This is the most amazing school. Um, I This is my, my first year at a charter school and I am so impressed and so amazingly passionate about our staff and our students here. So um, I, I encourage you, this, this is one of the best things that I've seen in my over 20 years in education. So if you're on the fence, I say, come take a tour of our school and apply, you will not be disappointed. Thank you, Sunday. Um, yes, and in terms of, we do get that question a lot about uh, when can we see the building? We wanna come see what your school looks like. So after, um, of course, right now with COVID, what this would normally be like an, an open house that we would do in our space and everyone would get to see the school, but because of COVID, we've done these all virtual. Um, but what we'll do is after we run the lottery and students, um, we know the students that are coming in from next year, later in the spring, we will be doing tours for new families. So we'll start with middle school and kind of work our way down um, based on social distancing and um, you know all of those protocols at the time. Uh, so I'm, we're looking to do that about uh, the end of April or beginning of May and organize some times for families to come in and take a tour. But I always welcome you to come take a drive to our campus and drive around the loop and just see um, that. And we do have a couple of videos that will be coming out early next week that are the tours, um, the pictorial tours of our school, as well as the um, some video testimony um, with some spaces inside our school. So you can see those as well.
Um, on the sports, she was asking, so they play other charter schools in the league? Yes. So the Taniva League also includes schools in Incline, like Tahoe Private School, Excel Christian School, Doral Academy. Um, and there's a, there's a few more. I think there's about eight schools in total and a couple schools from Carson City. So yes, it's other middle schools. You're welcome. Yes, and our middle schoolers. And if you have a middle schooler, um, there's, there's nothing like having an environment like Pinecrest Academy for your middle schooler. So I know sports are huge and I, you know, I, we've had students come um, this year who were like, oh, I don't know. And then sports didn't even happen <laughs> in different capacities. And they're like, I'm so glad we're here. So, um, you know, part of what we tell the students too is that, you know, this school is about our kids. So the interest that they have and the things that they want to do, um, is what we're all about. Our student leadership class just recently organized a fundraiser for one of our families and they organized a free dress day and did all of the marketing and promoting and came and worked with, with our team to, to execute all of that. So it's really just about our kids and what they need to do. Yeah, and typically, um, Alyssa, we do field trips and off-campus activities, of course, right now. Um, there's not a lot of places to go that are accommodating students. Um, we've gotten creative with our Rams Academy, being able to offer some of that in-house. Some of our um, teachers have also done some virtual field trips, bringing things into their classroom, which has been fantastic. So normally, yes, we are all about field trips and our community partners and, and working outside of our campus. You guys have awesome questions. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to jump on this uh, Zoom tonight and to learn about Pinecrest Academy. Um, it is just, the, the, it, it's been such an incredible year, first of all, um, but the amazing staff that we have at this school, the partnership that we have, um, our board is among the most visionary and collaborative in, in the entire state. So it's really a, quite, a, quite a special place. So thank you for taking the time to let me tell you about it. I love talking about our school um, and I'll be happy to stay on here for just a little bit longer if anyone has other questions. Otherwise, um, again, feel free to, um, to reach out. Um, I also, because the email's done, you can also um, find me on the Facebook page. If you message the Facebook Pinecrest Academy of Northern Nevada, it does come directly to me. I don't know if anybody knows that, but it shows up right to me. So feel free to message, comment, whatever. It comes right to me. And I get to, I get to answer as, as Pinecrest and so no one knows it's me, but it does. It comes straight to me. So feel free to reach out, share a word, um, anything, uh, ask a question. I'd be happy to con connect with you that way as well. All right. All right, yes, have a good night. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sunday, for jumping on. Thanks, Michelle for sharing all about club. Thanks, Carol. All right. There's no more questions. I'm going to jump off here and uh, thank you so much. I look forward to uh, seeing you guys um, in the future.